Uh, it's uh, one o'clock here in the West Coast in Pacific time. So this is, uh, I guess we'll get into it. Hey, H, how's it going? Oh. All righty. So um, for folks who are in the event, if you want to say hi in the chat, feel free to say hi there. I've left some messages, which you can refer to, but I'd love to uh, say hi to everyone. And uh, you can let me know where you're, where you're coming in from. Oh, whoa, chat. OK, chat blew up there for me. OK, awesome. <laughs> cool. Hello, everyone. OK, this is super exciting. The first Replicon, uh, my first talk at Replicon, obviously. Uh, hey, folks from all over Portland. Cool. I'm actually from Oregon, so that's awesome. Um, OK, everyone. So a couple things uh, I want to say off the bat. Um, you should check the top of the chat. I've left a couple notes there. Uh, I'll pin those. What's that? I'll pin those. Oh, yes. That's great. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, H. So a couple things before I get into it. Um, you're going to want to have, so we're going to actually walk through and build something today together as best we can. You're going to want to have two sites open in your browser if you can right now. They're pinned at the top of the chat. One is, one is replit.com. We're going to need that to build the replit project. The other one is this longer link. It's dialogflow.cloud.google.com. Uh, and that should take you to the Dialogflow console. You will need a Google account. Uh, to use Dialogflow and to, and to build this. If you're unable to follow along today, if you don't have a Google account or whatever, um, you can actually uh, you know, follow along with this later. This is being recorded. But uh, if you can try to open that site now, uh, both of those sites, uh, it'll help you follow along. OK. So cool. So everyone has those um, sites. I just want to make sure off the, uh, off, the, off the start that you have that. So I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm Sachet. I'm a product manager uh, on uh, the workspace at Replit. So the workspace is the, is the you know, part of Replit.com where you're, you know, you're writing code, you're looking at the output, you're you know, writing unit tests and all that. We're going to actually go through some of that stuff today. So that's, that's what I work on along with an awesome team. Uh, and I also have H with me here today. So thank you, H, for joining. H is actually one of the leaders in our community. He's going to help facilitate this workshop. So H, thank you very much for joining. Um, and so I started a couple of polls before I jump into the building a chatbot stuff. I promise we'll get there. We'll do some cool stuff there, but I want to get a sense of everyone's context here. So I created some polls. It's in the poll section of, of this event. And uh, if you want to go quickly um, answer those questions, it'll just help me have a sense of, of uh, what you all have kind of done in the past. And I can kind of tweak this talk a little bit to to cater to some things, right? So the questions here are like, you know, your skill level, have you built chatbots before? Do you use JavaScript? Because we're gonna use JavaScript for this talk and have you created a project in Replit? So thank you for your honest answers there. It's actually really helpful. It seems like a lot of folks here are either beginners or intermediate programmers. Um, some of you have built chatbots before, cool. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So some of this stuff might still be different than how you've done it, but we'll see. And it looks like about two thirds of you have programmed in JavaScript, about a third of you haven't. So I'll try to be, I'll try to explain the code as we're going. Um, okay, cool. Oh, another, another Oregonian, that's awesome. Okay, great. Uh, thanks everyone for, for showing me where you're at. So um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna build and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it end to end really quickly. And, um, and then I'm going to uh, walk you through each step and we're gonna add to it together. Uh, okay, nice, the Oregon team. Okay, this is great. Okay, so um, chatbots, uh, that's kind of like I worked on in a past life a lot. And uh, they mostly consist of like a very simple front end and back end, like a lot of different kinds of websites and apps. The front end or the you know client side is kind of where you're actually talking to the chatbot that might be in, an, in a website, that might be in an app, might be in a voice assistant. Um, and then the back end is usually uh, the, the part of the app where the chatbot might talk to to actually get things done, right? Like, you know, get you an order info in an e-commerce bot or look up something in the database or just figure out how the bot wants to respond to you based on logic, right? If you're playing a game with a chatbot, 
the, the bot might need, might need to go to the server to, to make some logic. So what I'm going to show you today is how to use Replit to build out that server side of a chatbot. Uh, so let me quickly um, actually show you uh, what I mean by that. I'm going to build something out here real quick. Uh, uh, oh, shoot. Let's see. So I'm trying to present. Sorry. Bear with me. I think... Uh, my computer is just giving me a little bit of a pain here. Okay, so um, all right, let's see. So that's not quite working. Okay, sorry. Give me one second. I'm just pulling up my. Green. Okay, so hopefully you can now see that I've I'm, like I have Replit.com open, and uh, unfortunately I'm trying to share a window, but it's only letting me share a tab at a time. So this is going to require a little bit of juggling on my part. Sorry, uh, Chrome is not helping me a lot. So first, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about how dialogue flow works. So actually, let's switch over to that. Um, okay, what you all can see is uh, dialogueflow.com. I'm going to create a new agent here. I'm going to call it Replicon Talk. And I'm going to show you all how to do this in a second, but just bear with me. I'm going to uh, just quickly walk through this. Um, there's no actual slides for this for this talk, but uh, we're just going to walk through stuff together. Again, I'm just going to quickly show you how this works to end to end, and then we'll walk through it all from the beginning together. So I'm going to create this agent. If you all, all went to dialogflow.cloud.google.com, you should be able to create an agent as well. Um, but I'm going to quickly do this. So the way uh, Dialogflow works, if this would create the agent, it's taking a second. OK, cool. The way it works is that you actually build the chatbot by um, uh, creating different intents. So these are things that users might say and, like, and the things that the bot might respond with. So if a user says, like, hello, hi, howdy, this one's already built out for you, the bot might say um, any one of these responses. And you can actually try this out in the uh, in the test kind of panel on the right. So if I actually say, like as the user, I say, hello, one of these responses is chosen at random. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to actually go to the server to get that response. And we're going to use Replit to populate that. So I'm going to go to fulfillment at the bottom. This is telling Dialogflow to go to my Replit backend to get the response. And I'm going to enable the webhook call. And we're going to go to fulfillment. Uh, whoops, I'm going to actually save that real quick. Go to Fulfillment. Um, enable the webhook. The webhook is what it's called when the user says something and the bot is making a call to the back end. And it needs a URL. OK, that's where we're going to go back to Replit. So if I go here, I'm gonna, we're going to do this in JavaScript. So this is the replit.com homepage. Uh, I'm going to click Node.js. I'm going to make an agent uh, backend, we're just going to call it dialogue flow agent. So it's Node.js. Um, I'm going to create that REPL. This is all the, the two minute part, by the way. So I'm going to move through this pretty fast, but we're going to go back through it together. So what's going to happen is it's going to pull up an empty Node.js REPL. And I think it's just taking a second because of REPLCon. Uh, and I'm actually going to be able to run one of the examples. So if I go here and uh, click on the express example, it actually pulls up all the code for an Express server. An Express server in Node.js is, is just a simple framework uh, for writing like a backend server that listens for requests. Dialogflow sends post requests. So I'm going to change this handler to post. And then if I actually go back to the Dialogflow page, I can look at the documentation here and see that the request, uh, Dialogflow expects this type of response. So I'm actually just going to copy that, go back to my replit.com, uh, my REPL project, and then put that in the send. So this is going to be the response that is sent back from my REPL. And you can see the indentation is kind of off here. So I'm going to click auto format and put a semicolon. And now when I run this project, it's actually going to install the express package and it's going to start the express server. And you can see the console is doing all that here on the right. The server has started. So if I go back, oh, and if I copy this URL, 
and I go back to Dialogflow and I put that URL in, then what we might see when I say hello is this text response from the webhook. So what that means is Dialogflow successfully uh, went back to Replit, went back to my REPL, got the response from there, and like just in a couple seconds, it actually it worked and uh, the response was there. Okay, so I know folks probably need a second to let's let's go back through that together. I moved that pretty fast. We're gonna do it all from scratch. Okay, so I'm even going to um, actually like delete all that code in the REPL, and I'm going to uh, turn off fulfillment here, go back to intent and, and, and yeah, start over. Okay, so let's go through this together. So let's go slowly. First off, hopefully you've created a project in Dialogflow. If you haven't, or an agent, if you haven't, again, when you log into Dialogflow, it should give you the option to make an agent. Um, if you need to uh, go through that again, it's something like this, right? So I'll just say, uh, replicon talk to, I'll call it, you're going to give the agent a name. All the rest of these settings don't really matter. And just hit create. Okay, I think dialogue flows just a little bit slow today. But this should be happening. There was a question in the Q&A about making an agent. Hopefully, in Dialogflow, you're seeing the button for that. Again, it's in this left panel here. You can use this drop down, or if you've never created an agent, it should bring you to an agent creation page. Okay, when you create a new agent, um, you're going to have two intents by default. So we're going to click into the default welcome intent. That's this one here. We're going to go to the bottom of this uh, screen, scroll to the bottom, click fulfillment, and click enable webhook call. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, hopefully folks are following along with that. So you have to expand this bottom section at the bottom of this default welcome intent and click enable webhook call. Okay, um, do folks want to give me in the chat like a, oh, page request invalid. I'm actually not sure, Sean, that's really weird, sorry. Um, that's a strange one. I don't know. Yeah, I can uh, show you again what I'm doing. So if I have the agent created, um, yeah, if I have the agent created, it shows me this page with two intents. And uh, if I go to the default welcome intent and I go to the bottom, so this, this intent page has all this metadata. I don't worry about it too much right now. If I go to the bottom and click fulfillment, I can click enable webhook call. And that's going to say for when the user says like what they're saying with this intent, I want to go to the REPL server and save. Yeah, sorry uh, if if you're having an issue accessing Dialogflow. Hopefully you can try, this will all be recorded. You can try again like later with um, a different browser, or different settings or something. Okay, so now that we have that set, what I want to do is go back to the left panel and find this fulfillment uh, section. Okay, so this is in the left panel here, fulfillment. And this is where I put the settings for my fulfillment. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on and it's going to need a URL. So turn on this toggle in the top right. And the URL, um, that's what we're going to go to Replit for. So now on Replit, let me just go back to the home page of Replit. So I'm going to share this, this tab. Okay. We're going to create the REPL together. So hopefully, if you go to your REPL.com site, you go to the home page, you should be able to, there's a few ways to create a REPL. You can see the Create button right here. You can click that. I'm going to click this plus button here. And I get the uh, REPL creation mode. Now, you're going to want to click Node.js. And it'll give your REPL a name. You can rename it if you want, or you can just keep that name. And uh, I, I'm going to keep mine public. So um, then I'm going to create the REPL. OK, hopefully folks are able to follow that. All right, so now you have an empty REPL. And we're actually just going to click this examples button here. So when you first create your Node.js REPL and it's empty, 
we actually provide some examples of what you might want to build. So if you actually click that, one of the examples here is this express server. Okay. That's the one that I want you to click because that's going to quickly scaffold up a bunch of code for you that acts as your webhook for dialogue flow. So just click into that and it's going to create what's called a get handler. So this is uh, like an, if your server gets a get request, it'll send this response. We're going to change that to a post request, uh, post request handler. So back, like replace get with post right here in your code. And then what I want you to do is back on the dialogue flow site, let's take a look at the documentation. Click this link here, webhook requirements, and you'll see um, this page from dialogue flows documentation. You can go to the response and it'll give you an example of how to respond to a dialogue flow agent. Just copy this, you can even hit this button, copy this bit of code from the text response section. And we're gonna put that here for the, uh, as the input to the send method for the response and put a semicolon. And then you can click this format button right here to fix the indentation. So this format button is a really cool thing in our, in our workspace. Sometimes when you're writing code, your indentation gets messed up and things, format can help you out. Um, so now you've created an express server that when it receives a post request, it sends some response, right? And when you run the server, you can either click run or you can even just do uh, command enter or control enter. Um, Replit's gonna install this express package. And if you give it a second, it's gonna run the server. And uh, now the server is running. And if I copy this URL, the URL is right here. This is like the URL of your server, okay, in the top right here. If you copy that, go back into dialogue flow and put that in the URL section. Okay, so this URL goes over here. Then save. Then what you see when you write hello is this text response from webhook. And this is coming from Replit from here, from this text. And you, go, you can change that too if you want. You can change this to something like hello world. Um, you can stop the server and rerun it. And then um, now when I say hello, I see hello world in dialogue flow. Um, so again, I changed, sorry, I changed the text in REPL, in my REPL here. I changed that response. And then in dialogue flow, when I said hello, I got that response. Um, okay, apologies if the stream is lagging. That's, uh, I, 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 I'm gonna try to move a little, uh, hopefully a little slower. Um, okay, let me look at the questions real quick uh, in the Q and A, and I'm gonna then keep moving. Um, okay, so how do we showcase our work in the Replit gallery? Okay, so you can actually publish your REPL, and I recommend you do this later. So on the Replit, uh, on your actual REPL in the workspace, if you click this project here, you can publish, and uh, and then you can um, you know share with the world. And I recommend you do that with hashtag REPLCon so everyone can find it easily as the uh, tag. Um, okay, let me. I'm gonna keep moving because we're. Uh, we're running a little short on time, but there is a, a link at the top for the finished, actually, let me share a version of this code um, with you all so that you can see what I've built. So if you actually fork this repo, um, you'll see the finished code of what I've just done. The readme has instructions and in everything I did. So uh, let me show you a, like one more feature, okay? So, um, if I'm in the REPL, let's say actually I want to add some functionality to this chatbot. Okay, I want it to actually answer a question. And I want the chatbot to like answer questions about Node.js. So what I'm going to do is, sorry, I'm moving a little faster. Let me go back to the intent screen. I'm going to create a new intent in Dialogflow. And I'm going to call it easy to learn at the top. Okay, that's the title here. The training phrases in Dialogflow, that's this section here. 
I'm, those are examples of what the user might say. So when the user's asking whether Node.js is easy to learn, they might say like, you know, is Node.js easy to learn? Is Node.js easy? Is Node.js hard? These are all ways of expressing the same intent. And um, what I can do then is uh, go to the bottom again, enable fulfillment for this intent. Uh, such a, you, you are still sharing the replit screen. You're not really oh, sharing sorry, the sorry. Thank you, thank you, H, thank you. Okay, let me, uh, let me actually start over. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I'm gonna create an intent right up here. That was the button at the top right. I'm gonna call it easy to learn. And then um, I'm gonna add a training phrase, right? And so the phrase is, uh, these are things the user might say, right? So is Node.js easy to learn? That's one example. Is Node.js uh, hard to learn? That's another example of a way a user might express that intent. Uh, is Node.js easy? And then I want the agent to go back to my replit, uh, my, my, my REPL to figure out how to respond. So at the bottom, I'm going to click this fulfillment section and enable the webhook call. And so now what I might want to do is in the REPL, instead of always responding with hello world, maybe I want to um, actually respond differently for that intent, right? So I can put an if statement and check the body of uh, the request to see which intent it is. Now, if you want, you can look at the documentation for uh, Dialogflow to see how the um, API works. But for now, what I'm just going to do is uh, I'm just going to, I just, I know how the response works. So there's going to be something called query results um, and intent.display name. And if that is equal to easy to learn, so if the intent that's coming in is easy to learn, then I'm actually going to respond with something like, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to copy the response and say, oops, say node is super easy. And otherwise, so else, let's see here. Yeah, we've got tabbing over, else, um, otherwise respond with hello world. Okay, so I'm checking and then um, and then responding accordingly based on the intent. Okay, so now if I stop this and run it and I try to, I remember I click save on this intent and I hit um, and, I, and I, I, I say what the user might say, which is, is Node.js easy to learn? You'll notice that, ooh, actually I got an error. There's no response that was available. So it went to the webhook and something went wrong. So I might be wondering what's going on. And I know the old code worked, this new code isn't working. So I'm gonna use the debugger in the workspace. So it's gonna help me figure out what's going on here. So if I make a breakpoint right here by clicking in this left uh, column, and then I stop this server, I can go to the debugger and hit play. So for folks that are following along, I stop the server. It's not running anymore. I put a breakpoint, this blue dot right here in this section, go to the debugger in the left column and hit play here. What that's gonna do is gonna run the server with the debugger attached. And it's gonna give me some information about this line of code when it executes. So when I hit play, you'll see in the column here that the debugger is running and the server is attached. And uh, now if I try this again, is Node.js easy to learn? It's going to actually hold because what's happening is it's making a call to Replit and Replit has stopped. And you can see actually now the debugger is showing me a bunch of stuff. So let me look at this request object and inspect, right? I'm expecting this property on it called query result. Uh, and I'm not seeing it here actually, right? So that means I'm doing something wrong. And if I looked up some documentation, I might learn that actually what I need is something called body parser, which is some middleware that I can use. So I'm actually just going to paste that in quickly. It's this line of code here. And then I'm going to tell Express to use that. And now um, when I run the server, and I'm also going to update my, uh, my code here that's going to check the body 
object of the request. When I run the server now, you'll notice in the console, it's actually going to automatically install this body parser package and restart the server. And hopefully now, if I run it, boom. Uh, in dialog flow, if I typed in, is Node.js easy to learn, I'm getting this response from the server. Node is super easy. OK? So um, here's what I want to do. Uh, I, I showed you folks how the debugger works. I showed you, fo showed you folks how it might look to conditionally respond based on these two different intents. Uh, where, oh, by the way, the blue dot here, that's a great question. That's in this left section here. So if you click left of six, you'll add that breakpoint. And then when you run from the debugger, when you click run, that's where the code will stop. Um, OK, so I've shown you folks a couple things there. The debugger, um, what I also uh, would have loved to show you if we had more time is uh, what it would look like to add more files. So what I want to do is, in the last couple minutes here, is I actually want to send you all like the completed code. You can look at how this would work. The last thing I add in the completed code is actually a new file which um, stores all this logic of sending different responses for different intents. And then I added a unit test to, ch uh, to test that logic. So uh, I will send those links in the chat um, right here. And you can check out the code at each iteration. So if you want the code of what I, what I just wrote, it's that. And if you want the final code, it is this link here. Um, Jaden, to answer your question, unit tests are a really cool feature of the uh, workspace. And they're a common thing in programming where you can test the output of a function to make sure it is what you expect. And the unit test uses this uh, testing framework that asserts whether the result is what you want. And when you run the unit test, instead of actually having to go to dialog flow and type out what the user said, It'll just check your function, and if the response, the output is what you expect, it'll pass the test. Otherwise, it'll fail the test. So what I recommend you do is go to that unit test project and go to this unit test uh, section of the workspace. It's down here in the left panel. So the debugger was up here. Unit test is here. You'll see a unit test to run if you fork that project. And then just click Run Tests. And in the console, you'll see the test run. Um, and uh, Maham, the, the debugging instructions are not included. Uh, I kind of did that on purpose here uh, just to show you all how the debugger works. But I think it's a good idea. I can make another version of this project with the readme instructions on, on uh, using the debugger. Um, OK, so you all have the final version of the code. I, I think we ran out of time here a little bit. It's, it's always a bit tricky running a workshop in a virtual setting. Uh, but hopefully, you all got a sense of, you know, um, the, the package installation that's done for you automatically, the express sample code, running the server easily, uh, adding unit tests, take a look at the final code for that. And um, I would love to also extend an invite to um, reach out to me if you'd like to uh, chat about your experience with Replicon. So I'm going to leave a link to a Google form. And um, I would love to hear from you if you have any feedback on this, if you want to talk to me about your experience with Replit, with the workspace. I love to learn from users. Um, so I'd love to hear from you all. So feel free to share that or fill out that survey. And I will, uh, I will be uh, happy to reach out. And for the questions about the workshop, this will be recorded. So you can follow along with this later. Um, take a look at the final code. Keep playing around with Dialogflow. Keep playing around with Replit. Uh, with Replit. Publish your REPL. I highly recommend it. Again, if you click this link up here and um, you uh, give your rep REPL a name, like um, REPLCon Talk or something. Um, here, I got to zoom out a little bit. Um, you can actually publish the, uh, the REPL. And you can say, I had fun building this at REPL or something. Um, and then you can click the Publish. Uh, button. Um, and you can use hashtag replicon in the publish tag, and everyone can uh, find it. And I'd love to take a look at your, your bots as well. OK, we're at time. Thanks so much. I appreciate you all bearing with me. Hopefully, this was useful. 
and you can see the recording online. Thanks again so much. Enjoy the workspace reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks.